This is the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13. The title here is The Narrow and Wide Gates. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. All praises, all power, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahashai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash. Yahweh being the name of the Father, who the world everyone calls God. Yahweh, meaning He exists. Bahashem, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai, who the world everyone calls Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh Shai, meaning He is the deliverer, He saves. Bahashem, in the name. Rakaha Kodash, Spirit Holy. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach well and rule well who taught me this truth. Peace and salutation to the Akyam. The fellow laborers, the hopeful elect, pushing this truth and risking their own lives through the four corners of the earth. To the Akwathim, listen and listen and learn in sincerity and the truth and in silence. Shalom. Akyam meaning brothers, Akwathim meaning sisters. Shalom. Meaning peace be unto you. It's your brother Shema from the GMS Toronto camp here in Toronto with another lesson. And we'll get right into it. Right. The Lord will. Uh, the title will come. It's along the lines of, this truth isn't sexy. It's not sexy, man. You know? And truth is where people like things that are that appeal to their worldly views. Right? And this goes into a conversation I had with an individual a few days ago about the truth. And they're asking about these other Israelite groups. And I was telling them, listen, man, the truth is not sexy, right? These are like groups with 20K, 30K, 40K followers, right? The truth, the truth, it doesn't appeal to everybody. It's, it's, it's rough. It's not a nice, it's not a nice message to everybody. Right? Didn't Yahweh Shai offend people and they stopped walking? Uh, uh, they stopped, uh. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's in John. I think it's in John. John 6. John 6 verse 58 and it reads this is that bread and this is red letter our Lord said that said this this is that bread which came down from heaven not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead he that eateth of this bread shall live forever right out of his belly shall flow, flow uh, waters uh, living uh, living waters Right? The bread being this truth. Right? The Lord was speaking. The Lord was using a dark saying. John 6, verse 59. These things said he in a synagogue. Salakia. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Right? They were offended. When Yahweh I knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is a spirit that quickeneth. Right? The Rakah Kodash. Quicken means to make alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Yahweh I knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my father. From that time many, Salakia, from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Right? So they were offended. 
right? They quit following Yahweh Shai. They're like, yo, I can't deal with that, man. Right? I'm not receiving that, man. Right? What do you mean uh, uh, this bread comes from heaven? They, 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 it was a dark saying. They couldn't, they couldn't receive it. Right? It says in Matthew 13, Matthew 13, so like you, we'll get back to the opening scripture. Matthew 13, verse uh, 13, verse 10, and it reads, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Right, the Lord was speaking to everybody else in parables. Right, let's look at this word parables for edification's sake, for those new coming in, right? Parables, strong G3850. Strong's G3850, parabole, parabole. A placing of one thing by the side of another. Juxtaposition as of ships in battle. Metaphor. A comparing comparison of one thing with another likeness. Similitude. An example by which a doctrine or precept is illustrated. A narrative fictitious but agreeable to the laws and usages of human life. By which either the duties of men or the things of, of power. Particularly the nature and history of power's kingdom. Are figuratively portrayed. A parable. An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. A pithy and instructive saying involving some likeness or comparison of having and having preceptive or admonitory force. An aphorism, a maxim, a proverb, an act by which one expresses himself or his possession to danger, a venture, a risk. In the strong, a similitude, i.e. symbolic, fictitious narrative of common life conveying a moral apothegm or adage. Comparison, figure, parable, proverb, right? So when the Lord was speaking of parables, he flew over the head of everybody else. But hear what the Lord said. Right? Matthew 13, verse 11. He answered and said unto them, red letter, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given, right? So the reason why the disciples were able to understand what the Lord was saying because the mysteries were opened up unto them, right? Via the Holy Spirit, via Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was supping with his disciples, but everybody else it flew over their head. So what? Back into what? Uh, back into the subject matter, right? The truth isn't sexy. You're going to see more. The, 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 where, the, where there's great multitudes of Jake, right? Right. They're still they're still clinging on to the world. They want the truth to fit their world, to fit the world, fit their life. They want to straddle the fence. Scriptures say you can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Let's get that real quick, right? You either all in the truth. And we see uh, these large grouped Israelites uh, engaging in physical con uh, 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 confrontations with one another, right? So lucky. Yeah. In Corinthians, First Corinthians ten, verse twenty-one. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord. Let's see if we can read up one. First Corinthians ten, verse twenty. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. Devil means deceiver, right? And not to power. 
and I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils, right? So there's no there's no half halfway in, halfway out. You can't merge the truth with the world, man. Right? So when I say to this uh, individual, you can't the, the the glamour and glitz large following Israelites is appealing to you because you're still in the world. That's why there's 30k, 40k, 50k followers, right? Right. We read the scripture in John six. Uh, disciples stopped following the Lord because they couldn't receive what He was saying. Right. And what are some of the offending things in 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 in, in, in uh, within Israel? The MOTB, the C hip, the Revelation thirteen verse sixteen on down. That's an offending uh, 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 topic. You got groups out here with thousands upon thousands of followers saying it's spiritual, right? When it's not, you got, you got, you got, uh, uh, what else? Uh, on the Friday sundown, the Saturday sundown, that's Saturn worship, man. They learned that from Amalek. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Right, enter ye in at the straight gate. Right, straight means a, pos a position of difficulty or, or obstacles. For wide is the gate, right? So, so the entrance into this truth is going to be filled with obstacles, man. It's not an easy walk, it's not a cakewalk, it's not a prosperity doctrine. It's going to be hard. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, right? To the gate. Leading into destruction. It's a wide gate. And it's a broad gate. Right? It's wide open. And many there be which go in there at. People going into destruction. Than there is that are going to be uh, of the remnant. Lord willing. We're of that number. Second is verse 9. Second Ezra 9. There's something I was meditating on, you know? Second Ezra 9 points to 22. Verse 20. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that into it. And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. The grape of the cluster is the elect. Right? Let the multitude perish then, which is born in vain. The multitude. So many are going to perish, man. And let my grape, the elect, be kept on my plant. For with great labor have I made it perfect. Right? Great labor have I made it perfect. The labor being the, 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 the hell that we catch in this truth, man. The truth is not a cakewalk. You're not going to skate into the kingdom. Right? You're going to suffer. You're going to catch hell. You're going to lose things. You're going to lose businesses. You're going to lose uh, 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 money. You may lose a woman. You may lose your family. Most of your family turns their back on you when you come to this truth. They tell you you're in a cult. It's a lonely walk. You're going to lose jobs. Esau's jobs. You may have afflictions of a, a, a thorn in the flesh. Scripture say when now when now uh Sirach Sirach two. So, 2 verse 1, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, right? Temptation meaning to suffer. Prepare thy soul. Get your mind ready to suffer. 
set thy heart, heart being mind, aright, and constantly endure. You gotta, you gotta endure. You can't, you can't, you can't simp out. You can't, you can't cry and fall back into the world when you come to this truth. Cry and fall back in the world because of the affliction and the hell you're catching, man. You gotta endure. This word says, this word here says, endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, cleave unto Yahweh Shai, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Right, you gotta endure. Right, cause we catch hell. And then the Lord open up, opens up blessings. Then you catch some more hell. Then the Lord opens up some more blessings. Then you catch some more hell. Right? Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient. When there are changed to a low state, right? When you lose things, take it cheerfully. You lose a woman, take it cheerfully. You lose your family, take it cheerfully. Be patient, right? When there are changed to a low state. For gold is tried in the fire, right? The fire being these afflictions, it's hell, these tribulations you catch. Hell being a condition. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, right? And who are the Lord's acceptable men? His elect. Matthew 7 verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Right? Straight being difficult. Obstacles. Right? Narrow meaning a small amount is entering into it. A remnant. And few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. So there's not going to be 30k, 40k, 50k uh, 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 congregations that, found, that find the truth. Right? Right, you're going to be hated and you're going to go through hell. You're going to go through, you're going to catch hell, man. Right, what's that scripture? Blessed are you when men shall revile you. Let's close with that. It's in Luke, 16th chapter, maybe. Matthew 5, verse 11. There's one in Luke 2. There's one in Luke. Matthew 5, verse 11. Blessed are ye. Red letter, our Lord said this. When men shall revile you, right? The Lord says a blessing when men shall revile you. Let's look at this word revile. Strong G3679. Strong's G3679. Anidizo. Anidizo. To reproach, umbraid, revile, of deserve reproach, undeserved reproach, to revile, to abrade, cast, favors received in one's teeth. And the Strong's. To defame, i.e. rail at, chide, taunt, cast in teeth, reproach, revile, abrade, right? To defame, rail at, chide, right? Scriptures say, blessed are you when men shall revile you, man. Yeah, how wish I said this? Right? Matthew 5, verse 11, once again. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Right? They go slander, smear, talk shit. Right? You're not going to have 30K, 40K, 50K people uh, 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 of a congregation, uh, a set amount of people uh, liking you, man. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Right? So the Lord's saying, rejoice when men shall hate you and revile you. For so were persecuted they, Salakia, for so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Right? The prophets were hated, man. Right? Persecuted and hated. Persecuted and hated. And those same spirits are back. Those spirits that persecuted and hated the prophets, they're back today 
doing what? Persecuting. Well, the persecution hasn't come yet, but they're hating the men of the Lord, man. Column men, great column, column men of the G, of the GMS grapists, right? Bum camps, snow bums, to name a few of some of the slander that's been said, right? So with that, stay prayer to prayer to CC. Call Allah Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone, a teacher on a rule who taught me this truth. Shall I warm to the hopeful elect?